Did you know that doing this with your fingers is pretty much the worst guitar habit ever? Or that a movement like this can potentially make you sound like a beginner player forever? There are a couple of really bad technique habits that affect mostly self-taught guitar players that prevent them from seeing any kind of significant progress, no matter how long they are practicing each day. And of course, I also want to show you five amazing exercises that will help you with fixing them. I also started self-taught when it comes to my guitar technique, and I made all of these mistakes for many, many years. That's why I know what I'm talking about. So please allow me to help you today with fixing them. Here's the first First one, let's see if you can hear what's wrong with this guitar take. So maybe for some of you that didn't sound that bad, but when you're recording your lead guitar tracks just to a metronome like this, so just the isolated guitar take, and you play like that with the sneaky bad habit in there, there will be a really rough surprise once you start adding other guitar tracks or instruments, because even if your guitar is perfectly tuned, it will end up sounding a bit like this. All right, so that doesn't sound that great. This first bad guitar technique habit doesn't only concern beginner players. I've seen this with intermediate players and with professional players as well. This is all about tensing up with your fretting hand in a stressful situation, like recording in a studio or playing live on stage. As you might know already, this is not great for playing guitar in general. <laughs> Not only is it quite exhausting to play like this, I can really feel it in my fingers already. You also risk getting a lot of unwanted noise because your fingers are moving so much. But the main thing I want to talk about today that I never really mentioned so far is the even bigger problem because when you're pressing too hard with your fretting hand, you're slightly bending the note out of pitch. And with more experienced players, it's usually not that bad. But even if it's just slightly out of pitch, you will still run into quite a lot of problems as soon as you start adding piano tracks or just a second guitar layer. So when it comes to fixing this, really relaxing your hand while you're playing and not pressing too hard and bending the notes out of pitch like this, I can personally really recommend an exercise like this. <laughs> So the reason why this exercise is really effective when it comes to relaxing your fingers is because in my personal experience, this problem with pressing too hard and bending notes out of pitch mostly occurred when I was just playing one note per string or maybe two notes per string. As soon as I'm playing a three note per string scale, I have a pretty good feeling for what my fingers are doing and how they are pressing on the fretboard. But if it's a tricky arpeggio picking section like this, that's also quite hard when it comes to the picking technique. I sometimes listened closely and I could hear that I was slightly pressing too hard, bending some notes out of pitch. So if you feel like you're guilty of that sometimes and your guitar sounds out of tune, although it's perfectly intonated and in tune, this is something you should work on. But now let's get to the second bad habit. Let's see if you can spot this one when I'm playing. <laughs> Okay, so this also didn't sound completely horrible, but maybe it looked like I was struggling a little bit with my fretting hand, and that's because I was. So what happened right here was I played a three note per string scale from the low E string all the way up to the high E string, covering all the strings I have available. So I'm starting in this position and I'm ending in that position on the high E string. But the reason why it looked and sounded kind of clunky is because I was locking my thumb in this exact position right here. When it comes to my personal technique and playing style, that's already way too high. I need it behind my fingers. In the area around my middle finger to really support them but that's not even the most important thing right here let me play the bad demonstration for you again <laughs> So by keeping my thumb in this exact position for the entire duration of this lick, this kind of works out for the lower notes. It's not a completely terrible angle, but as soon as I move to the higher strings, I kind of have to rotate my shoulder or my arm to make that stretch. And as soon as I arrive on the B string, the thumb is just kind of fighting the fingers and not supporting them. My fingers are not hitting the fretboard at a straight angle anymore, like when I started out like this, which is pretty good. They have to turn like this so that I can actually stretch this far. And then when I play on the high E string, it's just completely uncomfortable. Right now, I really feel like I can't stretch any further with my picking finger. Like this is my maximum amount of stretching that I can do. But as soon as I take my thumb and I move it behind my fingers to support them, I could easily do something like this. No problem at all. My fingers did not get magically bigger. I'm just placing my thumb behind my fingers to support them. This is something you probably know already if you watched a couple of my videos. But what you might not know is that I'm also following my fingers when I'm ascending and descending. So when I'm playing a scale across all strings, I want the same finger technique for every single string. I don't want the angle to change completely. I also don't want to activate my arm or shoulder and move my arm like this just so that I can make those stretches. I want it to look, sound and feel like this. <laughs> 
So while I was playing the scale run, my thumb was not gripping the neck like this. It was simply following my fingers like that. And I want to make sure that it feels exactly the same, no matter which string I'm actually playing on. And I think that's why a lot of guitar players say they feel very comfortable on the lower strings. But as soon as they start playing on the higher strings, it starts to feel really uncomfortable and weird. In most cases, that can be solved immediately by sliding your thumb back down here and supporting your strings so that it feels exactly the same, no matter where you're playing on the neck. Here's a really cool and quite simple exercise that you can practice when it comes to this. As you could see in this video, I also provided a thumb cam so that you can see what my thumb is actually doing behind the neck. The exercise is super simple, the B harmonic minor scale. So just pick any interesting scale or maybe this one. Play it from the lowest to the highest string and back and try to keep supporting your fingers in a comfortable way by following with the thumb behind the neck like that. All right, my friends, we're just getting started with this. Three more extremely important ones for you and the fourth one might be my favorite exercise that I'm working on at the moment. But before we continue, something really important. If you are a self-taught guitar player, as I mentioned, I'm also self-taught when it comes to technique and I would do pretty much anything to go back in time to look at myself while I was practicing to check out the picking technique and the fretting hand technique to slap that guy and tell him stop what you're doing you're completely wasting your time correct all these bad guitar technique habits before you keep practicing and you will make 20 years worth of guitar progress in one or two unfortunately I can't do that I don't have a time machine but I can help out you the awesome person that's watching this video so if you're really serious about this and you want to get better at playing guitar I made a special practice package just for you that you can download called the best Bad habit correction packet. It features exercise play along videos for all these workouts at very slow tempos and also at faster tempos so that you can just copy what you see on screen when it comes to the picking and the fretting hand placement. You can download special backing tracks with and without my guitar, of course a detailed guitar profile and a PDF tab sheet. Once you join my awesome community on patreon.com slash burnt with the link down below, you not only get access to this package but also to over 20 full guitar courses. Yes, you heard that right, 20 full guitar courses like my alternate picking masterclass, my 30 day sweep picking course, my 30 day legato practice workout. So you will finally have all courses when it comes to guitar technique and also music theory in one place. Trust me when I say this is exactly what you've been looking for all this time, simply because this is exactly what I wish I had when I was at your stage. So if you're serious about improving, do not miss out on this opportunity. Just click the link in the description or in the first comment down below. Join the world's biggest guitar community on Patreon today and finally start unlocking your full potential. I'm waiting for you over there. But let's talk about bad habit number three. Let's see if you can spot this one. Okay, so that one is a little bit less subtle. That sounded pretty terrible. What I'm trying to demonstrate right here is a very inconsistent picking technique. So sometimes when you play something challenging that revolves around alternate picking, you can play it other times, not so much. But my personal goal was always developing a picking technique that works every single time. And one thing I can see that keeps self-taught players from reaching this goal is getting confused with multiple picking techniques and approaches. So for example, I often see people playing a lick like this. <laughs> So just a simple ascending line in a scale. But every time they play it, the picking pattern is a little bit different. So one time it might be just down, up, down, up, down, up, and so on. Alternate picking, the way I played it. Other times there might be a hint of economy picking with two downstrokes in a row. So right here I was using alternate picking for the start, but economy picking for the last part. That's not a bad thing, of course, if it's a conscious choice. But if you keep mixing up different picking techniques and styles without really thinking about it, and sometimes you play it like this, other times like that, that is a recipe for inconsistency. It sounds like a pretty killer song title, actually. So my biggest suggestion, if you're struggling with picking and you feel like you're getting very inconsistent results, is focusing on every single picking stroke and figuring out one pattern for a lick that's challenging for you and sticking to this pattern. But the main bad habit I'd like to address actually goes a little bit deeper. I I think this often comes from completely isolating different picking techniques in the practice routine. So for example, working on alternate picking for half an hour, then working on sweep picking with the next block, then the next block is about economy picking. That's also how I worked for a long time, but I always made sure that there's a practical block as well in my routine, where I focus on combining those techniques in interesting ways, because that's what you do when you play a guitar solo. You don't play four measures of alternate picking, two measures of economy picking, and six measures of sweep picking or something like that. You combine those techniques, but in a conscious way. So you always know what technique you're currently using. And I think a great way of getting a more consistent picking technique concerning different picking styles is having a simple exercise like this in your practice routine. <laughs> So 
this exercise I just played for you is really cool because once again, it's really simple. It's the same scale phrase played twice, but I was playing it with alternate picking first and then with economy picking. That way my brain can actually internalize the difference between those two techniques, how they feel and how they sound. And I think having a mixed technique block like this in your practice routine really helps with not accidentally mixing different picking approaches when you're playing so that you get more consistent results. But let's move to the next bad habit and my favorite exercise from today's video. First, let's see if you can guess what's wrong with this next take. Okay, once again, that wasn't very subtle. It sounded pretty terrible, right? Aside from picking way too hard and mainly using my arm instead of my wrist, to me, the thing that stands out the most with this take is that the notes on the B string sound kind of okay. But as soon as I have to skip between the strings and play the note on the E string, there's a lot of string noise and everything kind of starts to fall apart. So you can clearly hear that the one string transition to the next string and back was tripping me up here. And I feel like that's the case with a lot of guitar players. They can actually play quite fast on one string, but as soon as they have to skip between between different strings, like with more complex alternate picking lines where you have to skip in kind of unusual and weird ways. They can't really do that. They feel like they're getting stuck between the strings. So they want a sound like this. So you can hear each note clearly and you can't really hear when I'm switching between the strings, but they mostly get a sound like this. So the speed with the picking motion is kind of there. If all the notes would be on one string, it would probably sound pretty good already, but those nasty string transitions are kind of ruining everything. So when I had this problem, I was just relentlessly playing three note per string phrases because that's where the problem occurred. But later I found an exercise approach that's actually much, much better for mastering complete control over those string transitions. And it's working on really awesome sounding exercises like this one. <laughs> You could hopefully hear this exercise sounds pretty great. This is based on playing arpeggios, so mostly just one note per string with alternate picking instead of sweep picking. So quite a lot of times right here, I'm playing an upstroke on the D string and I have to jump all the way to a downstroke on the E string. And if you're not perfectly in control of your string transitions and your picking technique, it's pretty much impossible to play an exercise like this and that's why it's so great. One more huge benefit is also that you can't play this exercise with a stiff arm like this. You will have to use your wrist to elegantly navigate between the strings. This is so much harder than it looks and playing small arpeggio shapes like this with alternate picking with just one note per string is one of the best and most helpful picking exercise approaches ever in my personal opinion. It's also a great fretting hand exercise because you can really focus on keeping your fingers close to the neck when you play those arpeggio shapes. For one of them the fingering pattern is also quite awkward because you have to play the ring finger on the B string first and then on the same fret on the G string with the middle finger. So this is a super tricky exercise, but it sounds amazing. It has tons of benefits for a picking hand, like the relaxed picking motion, skipping between the strings and correctly navigating the string transitions. It's keeping your fretting hand very busy. So if you're only gonna practice one exercise with the practice package I made for you on Patreon that you can download, please choose this one, because as I mentioned, I made very slow play along workout videos for you so that you can internalize the exercise. But then I was also challenging you with faster takes. So this week's practice goal would be playing something like this at 90 beats per minute, which is very fast for string transitions like that. Let's talk about one final but very, very important topic. Let's see if you can hear what's wrong with this guitar take. <laughs> Okay, so what I'm trying to demonstrate right here is something I sometimes see with intermediate self-taught players in my Patreon community. Some of them feel and sound really great when it comes to the lower sections of the fretboard, on the low strings and also on the high strings. They feel in control, they feel like they know where to place the thumb for the maximum amount of control. But as soon as they have to play guitar solos or even just melodies very high on the neck, it feels like they suddenly lost all of their skills and like they're playing a completely different instrument all of a sudden. So what I'm trying to say here is that a lot of people avoid avoid practicing really high on the neck because it's simply less comfortable. So they place most of their exercises from the first to the 12th fret and rarely practice up here. So above the 17th all the way to the 24th fret, if you have 24 frets. And then as soon as you actually have to play something right here, it feels really awkward. You don't really know where to put your thumb. When in reality, it's kind of a shame if you can't use the full range of your instruments, all the pitches it can actually produce. So I would definitely recommend working on exercises that go all the way to the highest note 
of your guitar. As you can see, I can definitely not move my thumb behind my fingers anymore because I would be touching my guitar like this and not the neck anymore. So when I'm playing that high on the neck, the thumb actually stays in position right here. But the reason why it works right here and why it doesn't work all the way down there is because the frets are very close together right here. So even though when I'm playing right here, my thumb isn't perfectly aligning with the area around my middle finger, it's placed a little bit to the left because I don't have any space anymore to move it further. It still works out perfectly fine with some practice and what's always cool to work on when it comes to the higher sections of the fretboard are of course some neoclassical exercises. I would recommend a workout just like this. <laughs> So with this exercise, it's all about a repeating alternate picking pattern with some interesting ideas in there towards the end when it comes to the rhythmic aspect of the lick. So it's not that difficult. What makes it kind of hard is the placement on the fretboard because you have to play it really high on the neck. If you don't have enough frets for this, make sure to move it down a little bit. No problem at all. As always, the download package has a guitar profile with full instrumentation. You can just either change the tuning of the guitar to move it down or simply transcribe it a couple of frets lower. But if you have some exercises like this in your routine that force you to play in the very high sections of the neck, you won't struggle that much with it in the future. All right, my friends, that's it for today. I really hope that these five exercises will help you with correcting those five bad habits. Please don't forget to download the special workout package I made just for you on patreon.com burn. You can find the link in the description and in the first comment down below. Once you join us over there today, you also get access to 20 full guitar courses. And if you decide to become a VIP or platinum member, you also get some direct coaching and input from me in the secret VIP Facebook group. So I'm waiting for you over there. Have tons of fun practicing. Greetings from Vienna and bye-bye.